Well, Joe Biden just met Donald Trump at the Oval Office, and uh, one of them was just a little bit too happy about it. Well, Mr. President, elect and former president, thank you, very Donald. Much. Congratulations. Thank you. Very much. And uh, looking forward to having a, like we said, a smooth transition. As Joe Biden had a big old smile, as a lot of people are now talking about his underhanded efforts that probably allowed Donald Trump to become the next president of the United States. As the ball right now is in Donald Trump's court, as he is setting up his cabinet with some uh, very interesting uh, picks. Some of them I really like, some of them I don't like, some of them I'm in the middle of, but we're going to give you a full, honest, real breakdown of the people he's choosing all around him. As, of course, it looks like the left is totally melting down and becoming absolutely irrelevant as I think the landscape is kind of being shaped here for a very interesting clash between the establishment and anti-establishment factions within the future Republican political party that are at odds with each other, which I see as the next big political clash point that I think is absolutely worth talking about. As, of course, so far, the left is capitulating as Joe Biden has promised a smooth transition into the Oval Office for Donald Trump as a lot of his bigger formidable enemies are literally trying to run away from public scrutiny as of course mark cuban just posted this meme harry session just responded quote yeah we're screwed to elon musk announcing his appointment to the new federal government under donald trump as don lamon has issued a video statement and a written statement and soon probably an AMA and multiple posts afterwards declaring how he is leaving Twitter forever. As my response to all of this is, uh, what a little weenie. Hi, everyone. I have loved connecting with all of you on Twitter and then on X for all of these years. But it's time for me to leave the platform. I once believed that it was a place for honest debate and discussion, transparency and free speech. But I now feel it does not serve that purpose. Hi, everybody. As we don't care. As, uh, uh, okay. See you later, buddy. As The Guardian is following suit as they just announced that they no longer will be posting on X on their official account as they're talking about concerns about its content because it is, quote, too far right and uh, has too much conspiracy theories in it. As for some uh, strange reason, all of these, uh, quote, democratic institutions really don't like voices being expressed in a democratic way. As a lot of the people, specifically on X, are countering the propaganda in real time, making fun of the establishment corporate media, and uh, I guess they can't stand the heat in the kitchen, and they're also fleeing as, of course, the ratings, the numbers for a lot of these institutions is absolutely horribly low. And rightfully so, as, of course, they've spewed so much propaganda, so much lies. As their emotional tirades and breakdowns are just exhausting and the American people no longer have a temperament for it, as it's pretty clear there is a larger cultural shift that is happening inside of the United States that is absolutely amazing to see, represented by, of course, Elon Musk, Vivek Ramaswamy being at the heads of a new department that was just created for them. This as internally, as the, as the left kind of goes away and becomes more and more irrelevant, relevant, it does spark up new kind of challenges politically amongst the right that is overwhelmingly in a major position of power. The right has won Congress, the Senate, the executive office. They have control of the Supreme Court. And it looks like they're battling uh, each other as now there are challenges against Speaker Mike Johnson inside of local elections. The Senate new majority leader for the Republicans is now John Toon, someone that literally told the Donald Trump to to uh, step down before and allow Mike Pence to become the president of the United States. As a lot of the people now surrounding Donald Trump um, don't have the best kind of uh, track records and highlight what I think to be larger threats against him and his agenda. As of course, some of these people, he even appointed himself. As the Daily Mail writes how he just appointed a Fox News host, Pete Hegseth, to head the Department of Defense in a quote snub to Tulsi Gabbard, who many people believed was right for that position. 
As we're still waiting to see where individuals like Tulsi Gabbard might land in the administration, as she might actually be the director of national intelligence, according to some sources, we're still waiting to see where Cash Patel lands, as a lot of people are saying that he could be the next FBI director, which I think he would be perfect for. But his uh, latest peck for uh, defense secretary, according to Michael Tracy, was, quote, literally a professional pro-war activist who lobbied Congress to support the Iraq war as he supported not just the Bush administration, but was seen here in this video with Lindsey Graham campaigning for, of course, John McCain, all the way back in 2008, as he was busy lobbying Congress to support the war in Iraq. A major blunder, a major mistake, and of course, this video is pretty old. Did Pete kind of change his mind here? Well, it's also important to note here that not so long ago, he called on Trump to bomb Iran's energy production facilities, their ports, and nuclear facilities, as he even went as far as to talk about the need to bomb mosques, hospitals, and schools if deemed necessary after the assassination of Soleimani that was carried out by Donald Trump. Uh, you know, hospitals, schools, this is what our enemies do. Now, that doesn't mean we go on and target cultural sites, but what it means is we are clear-eyed about how right. our enemies use the, the rules that we write against mm -hmm. us. And if we want to defeat them, and this is something, having seen it, if we want to defeat them, we have to think smart about how these rules, how we navigate within these rules without playing in a game that's rigged to help them so that we can't win. If we're going to fight to prevent Iran from getting a nuclear bomb, this regime, then we need to rewrite the rules that are advantageous to us. I don't want right. to hit cultural sites on purpose, but if you're using one to harbor your most dangerous weapons, then that should be on the target list. And the too. president did. Yeah, as it's fair to say that um, that guy's not uh, a peacenik, to, to say the least here, as a lot of the statements, a lot of the epithets, a lot of the thoughts that he gets out there to the general public literally come from the John McCain playbook, specifically when it comes to calling Russia a gas station with a flag and uh, warning specifically about the expansion of the Soviet Union. While, of course, he also previously praised sanctions on Russia, arming the Ukrainians, which all happened under the Trump administration as well. As another pick for uh, the Trump cabinet and administration was, of course, his CIA pick, and that was former Congressman John Ratcliffe, who also has uh, a very strong neoconservative bend, as he was one of the biggest proponents of blaming Iran on plotting to assassinate Donald Trump, as he literally said that the United States should be launching joint attacks against Iran with, of course, Israel. John Ratcliffe, now also the future CIA director, joined Mike Pompeo in lobbying for the renewal of FISA warrants, and according to journalist Michael Tracy, also participated in classified briefings that helped convince Speaker Mike Johnson to reverse his position and back these warrantless spying efforts on the American public. As his ties to uh, the Bush administration, particularly John Ashcroft, that uh, essentially destroyed the U.S. Constitution, obliterated our Bill of Rights, our privacies and liberties during the war on terror, um, doesn't bode a good record. Now, have these individuals changed their minds since making a lot of these very kind of bold statements? Maybe. Who knows? Am I willing to give them the benefit of the doubt? Okay, let's see what happens here. But them having such a very strong background towards individuals, groups, and ideologies that have countered and attacked Donald Trump directly isn't a good sign for, for Donald Trump, as, of course, the neoconservatives have been a thorn in the Republican political party. They have been able to establish policies for the Democrats that have essentially taken over their foreign policy view, and in some instances, neoconservatives overall as an ideology favored Hillary Clinton over, of course, Donald Trump. And Donald Trump should know, should understand, hey, the, the people that you're kind of surrounding yourselves with, as of course, there's also serious consideration about Marco Rubio becoming the Secretary of State here. And a lot of these other appointments all are kind of coalesced around these ideologies that are directly opposed against Donald Trump and the larger vision of making America great again. And with Donald Trump surrounding himself with these people, again, it's still early. There's still a lot of positions open. There's still a lot of speculation happening here. And I want to be as respectful as I can to this entire kind of delicate situation here. But so far, the signals in these appointments are a little bit worrisome if I wasn't 
fully transparent and honest with you, as it doesn't just represent larger problems for our foreign policy, but for Donald Trump himself. As we still wait for the appointment of a lot of the anti-establishment figures that, of course, the corporate media really is not happy about. As Bloomberg had a very interesting opinion piece saying, RFK Jr. is too dangerous for government. And that's exactly why I think he's perfect for government. As we got some good news about the government appointments here, as we got the news that Vivek Ramaswamy will be working with Elon Musk on the new Deutsche Department that will specifically be going after too much government. As they will start to crowdsource examples of government waste, fraud, and abuse and allow the American people to directly participate in extinguishing, firing, and getting rid of the government that's in their way. As the government wastes a huge amount of money and knowing that Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy will be the ones firing, stopping, and altering a lot of the nonsense and bullcrap and regulations and rules and spending programs that waste our money and time is some really good news and uh, is one of the white pills that I think a lot of people should kind of accept, consume. And appreciate, as of course, I'm very grateful for these two individuals to be working hand in hand, as there's an estimated $247 billion in taxpayer money each year that is just absolutely wasted away. As Elon Musk has for many years now talked about how too many rules, too many laws is not good for society. And I would absolutely agree with him on that larger notion. As he just retreated an older video of his by saying the world is suffering slow strangulation by overregulation. Every year, the news tightens a little more. We finally have a mandate to delete the mountains of choking regulations that do not serve the greater good. And uh, I'm super excited about that. And I think that is absolutely important news. As CNBC News even talks about how he could probably also help improve U.S.-Chinese relations as Elon Musk has a lot of very interesting business operations going along with the Chinese government, as uh, NBC News is uh, attacking him, saying that he, quote, might be overstaying his welcome in Trump's orbit, as Elon Musk also currently is at the White House with uh, Joe Biden and Donald Trump, as they are claiming two anonymous sources are talking about how he is pushing for a lot of policies, as again, I would... Uh, question the corporate media and their uh, anonymous sources personally myself, as they could also try to artificially try to bring a rift between the two parties here that seem like they're going to be working on some very interesting things with Vivek Ramaswamy as he just put out some of the key bullet points for his mission at Deutsch, specifically now arguing the legal mandate that he has that's also backed by the Supreme Court that will allow him to fire and stop a lot of bureaucrats from being able to intervene in your own personal life. As here's an interesting comment from uh, Vivek Ramaswamy around this particular kind of larger idea. Moments where we have to ask ourselves a tough question as conservatives. Do we want to replace the left-wing nanny state with a right-wing nanny state? Or do we want to actually dismantle the nanny state? I say our job is to get in there and shut it down. I'm all here for it, as of course, this is kind of exciting. This is pretty awesome. As Vivek Ramaswamy responded with truth to Charlie Kirk that said that the creation of Deutsch will be the first federal program whose goal is to eliminate itself. It exists to shrink government, not to grow it. This is a profound historic step back to the founder's vision of America. Elon Musk responded to this by saying yes, as Vivek has also withdrawn himself from consideration from the Senate appointment in Ohio, as all eyes are on Donald Trump to see who else he appoints to be around him in the future administration, as I think individuals like Michael Flynn, Tulsi Gabbard, Cash Patel, Richard Grinnell, and other anti-establishment figures uh, should have some key positions there, as we're still waiting for uh, the Libertarian that he is going to be selecting to, of course, a federal branch of the government that will probably be eliminating that federal branch of government. So, so far, um, you know, with Trump's, Trump's kind of transition here, automatically, as soon as he got rid of the Department of uh, Education and announced that he was going to do that, I automatically gave him an A. 
some of the picks that he started to make, I was like, a little unsure. B, I, I give him a B minus. It's going to be important to see the full picture here before kind of jumping to conclusions, as of course we want to see the larger kind of positions of power and who's going to be above who, who's going to be calling the shots, who's going to be influencing everything. As until we have this full kind of painting and understanding how everything will be working and coordinating and establishing itself, I think it's fair to say that uh, we should w wait until jumping to conclusions. We should still speak out as publicly as we can about the people that we actually like, the people that we actually wanted to see there. Your voice actually matters. This administration actually is listening to the people online. So uh, share this video. It's more important than ever. And if you have the means and ways, uh, support us. As of course, we're doing a legal fundraiser right now on SaveLukeNow.com. And if you appreciate our work, become a supporter on LukeUnfiltered.com. We started to do special behind the scenes videos after our live podcast episodes just for members exclusively about uh, our guests' most controversial opinions. Also, by signing up to LukeUnfiltered.com, you get the ability to call into our show. First time callers get a free product on WeAreChange.shop. We got a lot of really great products out there for you. Mo was one of our callers and we will be mailing him uh, the ashwagandha supplement that we have available for him that we just put out here on the desk to show you that the packages are actually getting out there to the general public. And on SaveLukeNow.com, we're trying to finance for a lawyer and we're doing that by uh, selling these limited edition hats. We only have 100. We can't even give them out to our friends and guests because I didn't. I was like, whoa. Yeah, we only need 100. I, I didn't think about it. But only our supporters will be getting this signed hats that are only going to be available for 100 people. We already sold a lot of them. I think we're going to be running out of them very soon. I will personally sign them and we sell them at a little bit of a premium to help me fundraise for a lawyer all on savelukenow.com, which we greatly support all of your help and participation on. So thank you guys so much for uh, being behind me, supporting me and uh, standing with me uh, throughout these very interesting times. They're about to get a lot more interesting as I think it's fair to say that uh, the future still looks bright I have a little questions about how we're going to be proceeding forward, but I think those questions are going to be met with actually people listening to us for the first time in a long time. So again, your voice matters. Share this video. We return 6 p.m. Eastern later on today with some really awesome in-studio guests today. Check out the exclusive videos we have on LukeUnfiltered.com. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys, and this is why I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on YouTube.com forward slash We Are Change.